But Paul says, I'm suffering these things. The reason why I have been shipwrecked, the reason why I've been thrown out of cities, the reason why I've been stoned, the reason why I have stripes across my back, and the reason why I am in prison, young Timothy, is because I proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Timothy, I want you to know what you were appointed to. Because if you're going to be in the program of God, let me assure you, life will be difficult at times. The road will not be easy. There will be times when you wonder. For some of you that are Sunday school teachers, and if you're teaching any place from the students from uh, 6th, 7th, and 8th through 8th grade, and all due respects to you students, uh, you can get so genuine and so nervous and so that when the Sunday school teacher occasionally steps out of her class, she said, why was I even here today? <laughs> Wondering whether you got anything accomplished or not. And before you give up, you better talk to God. What was I appointed to? And those of you that are church leaders, oh, by the way, I'm sure glad that you people changed that clock. And I, Larry, I don't know whether you changed the clock or not so you could preach longer or not. Um, I sure appreciate that. Uh, I looked at that clock and I said, wow, something's happening here. That, it needs a new battery. <laughs> So does a preacher brother. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, be sure you know what you were appointed to. And that when life gets difficult, whether you're in church leadership or not, there will be time when you will suffer because somebody won't like what you're doing. And they will let you know uh, that uh, they don't uh, like it. Uh, what you do. It happens time and time again. That, uh, uh, and you have to go back to God and say, God, you appointed me. I've been sharing the gospel. And uh, this is what I get for it. So before you run, be sure that you <coughs> re-look at what God has appointed. There will be suffering. And then Paul says, I know. I know what I believe. Because his wasn't a second-handed religion. His was an experience on the Damascus Road. And on that Damascus Road, he met God face to face. And God had him blind for three days until Paul realized. And each of us ought to know it ought not to be a second-handed Christianity that you have. It ought to be one that you know, that you know Jesus Christ as your personal savior from sin. You have experienced and that you can talk to your children and uh, others and say, God led me here today. And we have a number of people. God has answered prayer on behalf of Rachel, on behalf of Sherry, and we can go on and on and then name another others that it, God gives divine healing. There are other areas of life that God gives, let us know beyond the shadow of a doubt and be persuaded. Don't let somebody else persuade you otherwise, but know what you believe and know who you're trusting and who you're giving your life to. Let God <coughs> be supreme in your life and that you have no other gods before you but the Lord, the only one who is eternal and almighty, who has changed your life and made you whole completely. May God help us that each of us would know, and I'd say, and I'd say, be able to say, I know what I was called for. I know that God called me to this church, and God called me to serve in this church. God wants me to be part of a living organism that's alive and well and serving him. But in that process, it will require sacrifice and commitment. 
Is he here, Lord and King? God has spoken to you today. And you need Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Or if you would like to join this church or be baptized, you come as we turn to our last hymn.